We have reached the end. Quant Psych is dead. Oh, now, wait a minute. Are you saying this channel is dead? No, no, I'm not. Um, I'm just changing the name of the channel. That was a little clickbaity, if you ask me. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, no, no. No, I'll still be making videos. So, yeah, I'm changing the name from Quant Psych to Simplistics. Quant Psych comes from Quantitative Psychology, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what that means and why I want to change it. And also what a quantitative psychologist does, because that's kind of helpful information. And in the process, I might piss off some quantitative psychologists. And I'll probably piss off some statisticians and biostatisticians and that sort of thing. So let me start. Why is this channel called Quant Psych? Good, fine question, you ask. Well, I started this channel seven years ago. And the original idea for it came as I was driving to campus and I was going to explain the central limit theorem for the 10,000th time. And I was really dreading it because I don't like saying the same thing over and over and over again. And so I got this brilliant idea where I was going to record videos so I didn't have to say the same thing over and over again. So at the time when I created the video, my audience was my students. That was it. And then somewhat to my surprise, the channel grew a lot. And now I have students who are exercise scientists, who are biostatisticians, who are statisticians, who are mathematicians, who are data scientists, ecologists, philosophers, you know, the gamut. But here's the thing. Stats is stats, except for in economics. They have different stats there that are weird. But everyone else kind of follows the same stats. I think I just pissed off the economists. <laughs> so over the last several months, I've been wondering if I am kind of limiting my reach by calling it quant psych. And by calling it quant psych, I think it limits me, not because quantitative psychology is bad, it's great, and I'm gonna tell you why it's great, but mostly because it's misunderstood and or really unknown. So let me start by talking about what is quantitative psychology. So the way that I describe it is I tell people I am 80% statistician, 20% psychologist. Some days I say 90% statistician, 10% psychologist, and it, it really fluctuates day to day depending on how much sleep I get, my diet, and medications I'm on. But I'd say 80-20 is a good proportion. And so quantitative psychologists tend to specialize in a couple things. One of them is measurement. In biology, it's very easy to measure blood pressure. It's very reliable. But in psychology, if you're trying to measure somebody's depression, it's not terribly reliable. They're going to fluctuate wildly from day to day. And even if they report their depression at... 25, whatever that means, the chance that their quote unquote true depression is actually 25 is kind of small. So because psychologists work with a lot of measurement error, we have to deal with that in a very special way. And that's kind of where quantitative psychologists come in, or at least that's one of their specialties. Another related thing that we specialize is something called construct validity. So if we're trying to measure depression and we get a score, does that score actually reflect true depression levels? That's a construct validity question. And I think that quantitative psychologists' biggest specialty and the thing that they're best at is aligning theory with statistical models and with data. And we tend to think very, very deeply about the connection between the theoretical hypothesis and the statistical model. Quantitative psychologists do. Psychologists probably don't, but we do, the quantitative psychologists. So just to give you a better idea of what quantitative psychologists do, you would probably find the majority of them working for testing companies like SAT or ACT or GRE or whatever company produces these measurement things. That's our forte because you're trying to measure something psychological, which college readiness or whatever. And if you're trying to measure something psychological, then you need a quantitative psychologist. So I'd say the largest chunk of quantitative psychologists end up doing something like that. Another chunk like me, end up in academia. And of those that go into academia, there tends to be like two branches. Those that tend to teach a lot of stats and help others with their statistical analyses. And most of their publications are co-authored publications doing the stats for other people. And another group tend to focus their research on developing statistical methods. And that's more the group that I fall into. I get the impression that um, people assume that quantitative psychologists are second string statisticians or like diet statisticians with some statistical training, but not the sophistication of the real statisticians. And I don't think that's the case. We're really specialized statisticians. And I would say that quantitative psychologists are better at some things than statisticians are. Equal in others and worse at others. Go figure. So what are quantitative psychologists really good at? We are really good at matching statistical models to theory, like I said earlier. 
We're good at handling measurement error. And I think we are among the best at balancing practical limitations with statistical theory. And also we are really good at study design and measurement issues. And these are things that other fields would definitely gloss over because they're not equipped to handle it. Now some limitations, and this is where I'm probably gonna piss off some quantitative psychologists. I would say that we are less mathematically and theoretically savvy than statisticians. Because our focus generally isn't deriving statistical unbiased estimators from scratch except for like structural equation modeling, which is kind of a branch of statistics that quantitative psychologists have developed. And I would say as my caveat to preempt the frustration that quantitative psychologists have, there certainly are some very mathematically and theoretically savvy quantitative psychologists. My advisor was one of them. He was kind of a math genius. And I think probably our biggest limitation is nobody knows about us. I have not once had a conversation with anybody where they said, oh, quantitative psychology, I know exactly what that is. Never happened. We have a huge marketing problem. Uh, or publicity problem. I don't even know the difference between the two. So I'm gonna show you a table that is probably gonna piss off a lot of people maybe, of how I see statisticians versus biostatisticians versus data scientists versus quantitative psychologists. So statisticians, they're very focused on theory and method development, and they tend to use a lot of math and proofs and that sort of thing. And their typical focus is general purpose statistical inference. Biostatisticians, on the other hand, and I think I can speak about biostatisticians with some confidence because I worked as a biostatistician and I worked in an office with several other biostatisticians. Their emphasis is very practical applied statistics. So they tend to use a lot of generalized linear models, linear models, survival analysis, and some machine learning algorithms. And their typical focus is like on clinical trials and epidemiology, that sort of thing. Data scientists, they're probably the group that I know the least about. Their emphasis is on prediction and large scale pipelines. They use a lot of machine learning algorithms and automation. And their typical focus might be on business performance and product optimization. And I also see a lot of people who work with databases that are lumped in with data scientists, but again, not my area of expertise. And then quantitative psychologists, their emphasis is on measurement and theory based modeling. So they often use structural equation modeling, item response theory, multi-level models. Not to say that we don't use the other tools, but those are the ones that we are most known for. And they are the most unique within quantitative psychology. And typical focus is psychological constructs and modeling human behavior. So a statistician might ask, can we prove that this statistical estimator is unbiased? Whereas a data scientist might ask, can I use all this information to predict who is going to click on this link? And a quantitative psychologist might ask, does this scale measure what we think it measures? And I will say one other thing. This is uh, one thing that one of my advisors, Joe Rogers, said to me. You know, psychology gets criticized a lot for not being a science. And so it's a little less reputable than biology or chemistry or physics or whatever. And his response to that was, well, their job is easy. It's easy to measure atoms. It's easy to build models about things that don't change. But people change and people know they're being measured. Psychology is really, really hard. And because of that, we have developed a lot of sophisticated tools to try to bridge the gap between what we want to know and what we actually know. So now back to the original question, why am I changing the name? Primarily because the name quant psych isn't a very good buzzword. Not many people are talking about it. And also because a large part of my audience, if not most of my audience are not quantitative psychologists or have no interest in quantitative psychology. So they might assume my channel isn't for them because they have no interest in psychology. Psychology? I don't want this crap. I'm a statistician for dag's sake. So I want my name to reflect like the broader mission of what I'm trying to do, which is to get rid of the existing curriculum that exists in statistical education and use something that is easier, more intuitive, and more informative. And I'll leave a link in the description to one or two or three videos where I talk about that. I am not abandoning this channel and I'm not abandoning my roots. I am very proud to be a quantitative psychologist. I stumbled on it very accidentally, but it was very fortuitous and I'm glad I did. So this name change reflects an attempt to appeal to a wider audience. But why simplistics? It actually started in this video. That's so easy, it shouldn't be called statistics. It should be called simplistics. And when I said that at the time, it was totally off the cuff, as most of my more hilarious moments are. And after I said that, I'm like, that is catchy. Because that's how I feel about my approach to statistics. It is simplified statistics. It is a way to make understanding statistics 
way easier. I think it's a cleaner name. I think it's a friendlier and more inclusive name. And not to mention that I now have a website, simplistics.net, and a platform, Simplistics, for teaching stats. So it makes sense to change the name of the channel to reflect that. So I think that this name represents a better fit of what this channel has evolved into. So what can you expect moving forward? Glad you asked. Same creator, me, same tone, very um, silly. Oh, by the way, minor rant. Um, well, I guess it's not a rant. I just think it's hilarious when people come to my videos and complain and say, will you stop with the jokes and get on with the lesson? I'm like, hey, if you want a boring lecture, there are plenty of videos out there. But if you want to be entertained and learn at the same time, this is the place. And I also, um, I actually had a revelation of sorts recently. Um, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I was getting bored of creating content for my channel. Because I felt like I just was, it was almost like that original story that I just felt like I was talking about the same thing over and over and over again, just in slightly different ways to get a new video. And I didn't like doing that. And recently I started investigating something just to satisfy my curiosity. And that is a massive driver for me in academia. That's why I chose academia is because I am insatiably curious and I like learning new things. And so, so with that in mind, I've decided I'm going to start exploring things that I don't know much about. Like survival analysis. I don't know that I've ever done a survival analysis. Time series analysis. I did that as an undergrad, haven't seen it since. But I'd love to revisit it. And there are so many statistical models out there and machine learning algorithms and all these things that I don't know much about, but I want to learn about them. So moving forward, you can expect that. A broadening of the sort of topics that I address. And throughout this process, I still am going to have this kind of applied bend to it. Not this deeply theoretical bend, because honestly, that's kind of boring to most people, me included. And for me, and by the way, um, I don't remember if I've ever said this on my channel, but uh, in graduate school, I had a very theoretical focus. It was on missing data. And I have since shifted my focus away from missing data and toward data visualization and that sort of thing. And the reason why I shifted that away is because we would spend so much time working on this project and figuring out an unbiased estimator for some situation that you might be in where you have missing data. And it was technical and it was fun and exciting, but then we'd publish something and then I knew that the problem that we were addressing was so nuanced that the likelihood that anybody would ever use that was very, very small. And so I've always been in favor of doing something way more applied and something that I know somebody's gonna use and somebody's gonna find useful in the future. And likewise, I continue to teach from that perspective. The things that I talk about on this channel, I fully expect lots of people out there to internalize what I'm saying and then use it in their everyday life. That's awesome. That is so satisfying to me. So you can expect that going forward that I will continue to have a focus on the application of these methods. So I hope you'll stick with me because that would kind of suck if I like change my name and then lost my entire audience. So please don't go. And speaking of simplistics, if you want to take a class with me at simplistics.net, visit the link in the description. Did you know I teach live classes like live through Zoom? But you could also do on demand. And I just opened up a live class for June. I had to see what month we were in currently. So I hope to see you there. And so, um, well, for, uh, for the last time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign out as Quantsyke. I, I did not expect this to be emotional. Bon voyage. I'm just kidding. I'm still going to... I got to do the thing. It's just part of me. Anyway, peace out. See you next time. Bye.